Um, I appreciate the gentleman from North Carolina uh, amendment. Uh, it, you know, I, I could argue that and agree with you that it is a step in the right direction with regard to the underlying uh, amendment, but I'm not exactly just how big of a step. So we're going now from it could cause a problem to it's likely to, and I guess someone else could propose an amendment that it's reasonably likely to, or an amendment that it's more likely to on Thursdays than on Fridays, but not on Wednesdays. I'm not exactly sure how much you really move the, uh, move the, uh, the spectrum with regard to the constitutional underlying issues here in the bill. I remember fairly well uh, um, a few weeks back when we were having opening discussions on this and a hearing, and I think it was Secretary Geithner was in the, on the panel, and the gentleman from uh, Pennsylvania, the sponsor of the bill, was getting quite agitated, and there were some of us on our side of the aisle who were just about ready to lend the gentleman from Pennsylvania our time so he could continue with the thrust of his argument. And the thrust of his argument was at that time, where is it in the Constitution that this, either the board, meaning the Federal Reserve Board, or the council, meaning the councils that's set up under the underlying bill, where is it in the Constitution that this authority uh, is given to the executive branch to make these uh, draconian decisions, these taking decisions, um, these uh, adverse decisions to property rights, where is it in the Constitution? And now as I say all that, I remember, um, now I remember the response from Secretary Geithner was, well, Congress has done this sort of thing in the past, and, um, and so we're just going to continue it and do it in the future. And I commended the, um, the gentleman from Pennsylvania afterwards for going down that uh, road of bringing up the constitutionality um, problems that are in the underlying bill. Fortunately, I still see it here, um, both in the amendment um, of the gentleman from North Carolina and this amendment here from uh, the gentleman from uh, Pennsylvania, because here you're still doing the same thing. You're still saying that Congress somehow, extra constitutionality, constitutionally, I believe, is saying that an independent body uh, within the executive, if they, per, if they conform to certain standards, are able to go and seize assets, tell companies that you're just too big, too interconnected, um, or some of the other standards that are set out in here, all better improvements over what's in the underlying bill, just because they could be a problem, or they're likely to be a problem, or maybe they're going to be a problem next week, or something else like that. Um, I still have the exact same feeling towards this as I thought the, the gentleman from Pennsylvania had when he was raising the constitutional issue. Congress just can't, just because we've done things in the past that are outside the framework of the Constitution, can just go forward now and say, we've done it before, so we're going to do it together. We're going to create up a whole new agency or council to do it. That doesn't give you the constitutional authority to do it, and neither does this piece of legislation, and neither does this amendment. And looking to the underlying amendment here, to which the gentleman from North Carolina tries to amend, um, as the gentleman from Texas makes reference to in part, we actually constrain the hands of the judges when we try to give them some due process um, rights, which I commend the gentleman from, um, from Pennsylvania on, because I know I spoke to him on the floor about that. They said, you need to have some sort of thing in here about um, due process in here before you do it. And it's, it's a start on page 7, section H, line 9, judicial review. Um, but we're really, what does it say? It says, in reviewing the council's impositions um, uh, of mitigatory, mitigatory action, the court shall rescind or dismiss only those actions it finds to be posed in arbitrary and capricious manner. What if they weren't arbitrary and capricious? Um, what if they were reasonable? Okay, so they made reasonable actions to say because it was, it could have happened or it's likely to happen. So if it's reasonable that uh, these things could, that the economy could be affected by the, by the, uh, uh, by this company, uh, by their decisions. Now we have given an executive body the ability to come and dismember that corporation. I don't know that that's within the confines of the Constitution. I don't know that we have that authority to just because on, we reasonably believe this company is going to have an impact on something like that, we're able to just come in and tell that company, no, you can't acquire this other company. No, you, no, you must divest this company of this other, these assets, what have you. I don't believe that that's the, uh, with the correct interpretation of the Constitution. And for that reason, although the gentleman from North Carolina's um, secondary amendment is an improvement, I don't think it goes far enough to clarify all these issues, and I would uh, 
propose that amendment.